So hey everyone, this is Intro to Software Defined Radios. Uh, I'm Jordan Pride, a fourth year undergrad student here at the University of Waterloo. Um, I'm also representing the University of Waterloo Amateur Radio Club, um, so you can tweet me at, at Pridem. Um, you can also tweet uh, the club directly at V3EOW, or you can find our website at uwarc.uwaterloo.ca. So let's get started. Um, so I'm gonna talk today about what software defined radios are and who uses them in the industry. Um, I'm also going to talk about um, what your first, what I recommend for the first SDR. It's the most popular by far. Um, I'm also going to talk about um, transmitting uh, on the radio and licensing. Um, and I'm finally going to talk about reverse engineering uh, digital radio systems. Um, a little bit about the motivation for this talk. I've heard a few people use the analogy that radio is like wizardry. Um, we can use radio to detect and make things happen that are hard for people to perceive and understand. Uh, in keeping with the theme of this conference, who doesn't want to be a wizard? Unfortunately, in this talk format, I don't have the time to demystify how radios work in general. Um, but I do hope, though, to inspire you to explore radio technology yourself. And I'm going to show you the tools um, that, uh, help you, that will help you perceive radio uh, waves uh, both visibly and audio, audibly. Even if not, I hope you can take some of these ideas away to build cool projects, uh, many of which are just plug and play. So first, um, what is a software-defined radio? An SDR is a radio communication system where components of radios that were traditionally implemented in hardware are instead implemented in uh, software. Um, some of these components could include uh, mixers, filters, uh, modulators, and demodulators. A little bit more about that later in the talk. Um, with software-defined radios, we can replicate different hardware configurations uh, to build many different kinds of radios. Um, for example, um, if you had an AM radio, you couldn't use it to listen to an FM broadcast. It just wouldn't work. You'd hear alien sounds. Um, similarly, if you had a packet radio, you couldn't use it to uh, pick up either AM or FM broadcasts. Those are just audio waves, and um, you just wouldn't be able to do it. They're different processes. Um, so SDRs work uh, with general purpose computers to process digital signals after their conversion from analog. Um, simply put, with a software-defined radio, we sample yet raw, yet unprocessed information about uh, radio waves uh, at a fast enough rate to be useful to us. Um, what the PC then does is transform that raw information about waves into whatever form we need, whether it's audio, TV, uh, Morse code, um, or digital packets. So who uses SDR? SDR is pretty much used across the entire industry now, from um, commercial broadcasters um, to the cell phone, um, uh, cell phone carriers. Um, some of the major SDRs are actually developed by um, the, uh, the cell phone carriers. Um, it's also used uh, by amateur radio uh, operators. Um, it was originally developed by the military for its flexibility. Um, and it's used by prototypers to um, build uh, new systems that no one has ever seen before. Um, so next, we're going to talk about um, basically baby's first SDR, although lots of people just use this all the time. Um, so this is the RTL SDR dongle. In this case, RTL just stands for um, Realtek. Um, which is the vendor of the main chip inside of this dongle. Um, it's an entry-level SDR that can be used for receiving only. It has no transmission capabilities. Um, this is great for getting your feet wet, as it requires no licenses to use, and can be used for a wide variety of fun and interesting projects. Um, it can be used on the frequencies bet uh, between 25 MHz and 1750 MHz. Um, it was originally developed to receive uh, European digital TV, um, but it was discovered a few years ago via reverse engineering that it could actually be used to sample the raw radio, raw, raw radio waves, and those could be used as an entry-level SDR. Um, you can get it from Amazon for about 30 bucks, so it's not gonna break the bank. Um, and uh, do note uh, that to adequately pick up signals in some of this range, you will need to purchase a specialized antenna, um, for, uh, for example, like for picking up satellites as the uh, signal could be quite faint. Um, if you're interested in listening to shortwave radio or something at a lower frequency, um, you can also pick up another device called an up converter that will kind of um, take those lower frequency and bring it up to what the, this receiver can receive. So what can you do with an RTL SDR? Um, so the first thing you could do anywhere in the world is just plug it into your computer and listen to commercial FM radio, um, listen to music, that's great. Um, you can also uh, use it to track the location of overhead airplanes um, using a protocol called ADSB. Um, this runs at uh, uh, 1090 megahertz. Um, you can also listen to your um, local weather alerts radio. This is like a government service, um, and it's, uh, it's audio. Um, and in Kitchener here, it's uh, 162.550 megahertz. 
Um, you can also decode um, weather satellites, um, and those run at 137 megahertz, but as I said before, you'll probably need a special antenna for that. Um, you can also listen to low, bat low power battery powered devices um, uh, running on 443 megahertz. Um, these are things like um, garage door openers um, and um, things like that. And you can also listen to um, emergency response channels. Um, so here's uh, just a pretty picture of what um, the different, most of the different pieces of software look like when you plug in an SDR and you just download the software. Um, it's, this is a waterfall graph. Um, on the x-axis you have frequency and on the y-axis you have time. Um, and the colors depict the amplitude of the waves. Um, and I'll post these slides later and I'll tweet it out so you can find that later. Um, so, um, so about the 443 megahertz spectrum. Um, so there are lots of interesting things that run at, um, on 443 megahertz. Um, doorbells, switches, car keys, thermometers, weather stations. So you can build lots of cool projects, like um, say you want to uh, put a weather station outside your home and um, put that weather up on a dashboard or tweet you when it's really cold or something. You could also um, build kind of a, um, a little security system, like basically there's tons and tons of things you can do with this. Um, you can also listen to emergency response radio. Um, by law in Canada, though, you cannot divulge or act upon any information you intercept. You may not decrypt any encrypted communications, however badly encrypted it is. Um, please read and understand the Radio Communications Act um, or whatever law you have outside of Canada. It's pretty unambiguous. Um, so here's a great reference to the different protocols, uh, or not different protocols, the different frequencies uh, like fire and ambulance and things like that use. Um, this is for the Kitchener-Waterloo area. Um, you can find more at radioreference.com. Um, you can also use a piece of software called Unitrunker. Unfortunately, it's Windows only to listen to these systems as they usually jump around frequencies. Um, so we're now we're going to talk about transmission and licensing. Um, so transmitting on frequencies you are not licensed for is illegal, full stop. Don't do it, please. Um, Low-powered devices transmitting on certain frequencies may be license exempt. This is why we can do things like use a cell phone or turn on a TV, uh, things like that. Um, but any other radio equipment generally requires a license. Um, the most accessible kind of license to get for transmitting on the air is an amateur radio operator license. Um, so how do you become an amateur radio operator? Um, so the first thing you need to do is study the material. Um, we have a great study guide um, up at our site, uwarc.uarlo.ca slash guide. Um, you can also usually take a course with your local club. Um, you can also take tons of practice exams. So the way that the uh, amateur radio exam works is that um, 100 questions are picked out of a public domain exam bank. So we know about all the questions ahead of time. So you can just do as many sample exams as you want. It's, this is hosted by the Canadian government. Um, it's very similar in um, the US and elsewhere in the world. And to get basic with honors, which is kind of the standard level, um, you need to get 80 questions out of the 100 correct. So finally, let's talk about reverse engineering digital signals. Um, so for reverse engineering digital systems, um, let's say you want to build your own garage door opener, uh, toggle a radio light switch, or drive around an RC car. Um, for this, we need to reverse engineer the original system. Um, for this, we need to discover three things. The frequency, uh, which the remote transmits at. Um, the modulation, which the remote uses to um, transmit uh, the binary string. And finally, the protocol, which binary string we need to send to make the car turn left, to make the lights turn on, such and such. So first, let's uh, talk about finding frequency. Um, so this is usually pretty easy. Um, all devices, when you purchase them, um, whether you purchase them in Canada or the US, have to be licensed or have to be certified, as I had said. Um, so in the US, you can use the FCC search. Um, and in Canada, for devices purchased here, um, you can use the Canadian radio uh, equipment search. Um, another cool way to do this is to use the SDR you bought and turn it into a spectrum analyzer and just try to figure out where it is, if you can kind of guess at the range. Um, and this is just a image of um, Q spectrum analyzer um, kind of sweeping a large swath of spectrum. Um, so next is modulation. So modulation is the act of varying one or more properties of wave in order to transmit information. Um, a modulator takes a, an input signal, so this is going to be the, uh, the binary string, so up when it's one, down when it's zero, um, and a carrier signal, uh, which is the wave you are modulating. It's usually sine or cosine, um, and outputs the wave to be transmitted over the air. Um, so this is an example of AM, FM radio. Um, so the input signal would actually be an audio wave, and like I said, the carrier is cos sine or cosine, and for AM, um, we change the amplitude of the wave, and for FM, we change the frequency of a wave. 
Um, a demodulator just does the reverse, and a modem does both. Um, so here are three diagrams. Um, on a uh, digital system, um, what we are doing is called keying because we're sending a binary string. Um, and so the uh, leftmost um, picture is the amp is amplitude shift keying. Um, when we're sending a one, we have um, a higher, uh, we send a higher amplitude, so we um, change the carrier wave to have a higher amplitude. Um, and when we're sending a zero, we just send the carrier wave. Um, in the middle, we have frequency shift keying. Um, so it's a very similar idea, but with frequency. So when we send a one, we send the same signal in this picture, um, the carrier wave. But when we send zeros, we send a higher frequency signal. Um, and the one farthest to the right is phase shift keying. Um, and basically what this is, is we shift the phase of the wave, if you remember um, from high school physics. Um, whenever we go from a one to a zero, otherwise the phase is the same. So as you can see, the, the first two zero zeros on the farthest to the, the left have the same phase. But when we switch back over to the one, um, the phase is shifted over. Um, so now let's talk about um, the protocol. In a lot of cases, you don't actually have to reverse engineer the protocol. Um, reverse engineering protocol is usually just a lot of guess and check and kind of figuring out what fields are and that kind of thing. Um, but one nice shortcut to this is a lot of the times, you don't even have to go through that, all that trouble. You can just um, record um, holding the left on the remote and play that back, and oh, the car is going to turn left now. Um, or for the light switch, you can record pressing the button on the light switch, and um, oh, the light will turn on, things like that. Um, this even sometimes works with security systems and door keys. You know, think about it, right? <laughs> um, so in conclusion, uh, buy an RTL SDR, um, build something, and just learn about how radios work. Um, those waterfall graphs are really great for learning about um, radio, and there's just tons of resources online, especially from the amateur radio community. Um, if you want more, Get licensed as an amateur radio operator. Um, go attend your local clubs. Um, the school has one, but there's also a KW one. Um, and pretty much everywhere um, will have a local um, amateur radio club. Um, and finally, clone something you use every day um, and that you want to know how it works. And become a wizard. Um, if you have any questions, the uh, on conference is up next. Or you can tweet me directly at Pridem, or you can tweet the uh, club at, at VE3UOW. Thanks.